Welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. We're here today with special guest, Brett Casper, who's here to share with us his new book, The Political Gut, Reset Your Reality, Quantum Nutrients, Two Brains, Upside Down Diets. So have you ever questioned who really controls our plate? Well, today we'll be exploring the intersection of food science, politics, and economics. So Brett Casper is a food expert and recognized internationally as a pioneer in the kombucha industry. He founded award-winning wellness brand Pure Luck and opened New York City's first kombucha cafe, all before gut health became a buzzword. He has been profiled on three continents and received accolades from Food & Wine, New York Magazine, Vogue, and Elle, while notably collaborating with Michelin star chefs Fendi, Fresh, Brooklyn Brewery, Porsche, and Six Sense Resorts. So welcome to the show, Brett Casper. Thank you, Marianne. Super happy to be here, and I can't wait to get started. Well, I can't wait for you to start talking about this either because, man, it really piqued my curiosity. So can you share with us what the political gut is? The political gut is kind of the the combination of our our food system and our political system. And then it also is part of our capital system, our capitalistic system that we have in, in the United States. So it's kind of the crossroads of all of these different things that come together? Right. Because our gut is inherently our our second brain. A lot of things are going on down there and they influence our decision-making processes. And since it does that, I called the book The Political Gut because a lot of corporations in America are defining what what food is and what food isn't. How is that affecting our decision-making process then? And if we've got all these other factors that are tied into our food? Right. And, and, and it's a little complicated, but I'm going to try to make it a little less complicated here. And, and it's all really fascinating. Like gut health is this, this new frontier in targeted medicine. And uh, we really, we just barely scratched the surface. You know, the, the discoveries to come are, are going to be incredible. And what happens is, as I mentioned, the brain connects to the gut via the, the vagus nerve. And this is where our gut instinct is derived and, and why we call the gut the, the second brain. And let me give you an example to kind of just get you an idea here. Scientists have been able to single out certain bacteria and directly relate them to an effect on hormone production via the vagus nerve. So uh, we can't really talk about uh, gut health without talking about the endocrine system. And simply put, the endocrine system controls sexual function, reproduction, sleep-wake cycle, homeostasis, and and most importantly, mood by by regulating hormones. And so what's happening is that there are all these chemicals in in our food, our water, and our products, and and they're all endocrine disruptors. And we are being exposed to these these chemicals daily. And and a quick example of of these chemicals, how they get into into our bodies, is a study of breast milk found that every single woman in the study had hormone disrupting uh, PFAS, PFAS chemicals in, in their breast milk. So as soon as a baby is born, uh, these chemicals are affecting the baby's development because that's one of the functions controlled by the endocrine system. So for humans to operate effectively, we, we need the right bacteria to help control stress, regulate hormone production, and we also need the right bacteria to metabolize food properly, which makes nutrients bio- available for absorption into our, our gut, into our bloodstream. And you know, everyone, like anyone who's ever had a stomach ache knows, right? When you have a stomach ache, uh, you, you you don't feel good. It affects your mental health, and chances are you're you're not feeling happy when you have a stomach ache. So what's happening is the combined effect of pesticides and antibiotics are killing the good bacteria, which then can cause bacterial imbalances, throwing the system out of whack. And and I think there's a great example of this out there, which a lot of the listeners probably have never heard of, um, and it's called auto brewery syndrome or ABS. And this is when bacteria colonies form in your gut and they produce alcohol by fermenting starches and sugars in your gut. And ABS is is, like, it's extremely difficult to diagnose unless it's severe. I mean, so it's it's possible this could be happening 
in, in many of your the listeners out there right now, this could be happening in your guts right now. And you, you would never know it I, I, until maybe you were stopped by the police and had to have a breathalyzer. And, and they were like, well, you're above the legal limit. And, and you're like, no, I haven't been drinking. What's going on? And, and, and actually, unfortunately, a, a lot of the stories about ABS, that's how people find out that they, they have ABS is that they were stopped by the police. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a weird situation. And so to kind of make sense of it, it, it's common knowledge that alcohol can cause paranoia and hallucinations, and, and people with ABS have exactly that, paranoia, terrible mood swings, combined with aggressive and belligerent behavior. So, so this is one example how gut bacteria can directly affect your view of reality, so to say. And then, uh, you know, a couple other things to keep in mind is, is fermentation is happening in your gut all the time. I mean, that's how food is, is broken down. Something else worth mentioning, I think, is that 93% of serotonin is produced in our gut. And serotonin it controls our mood. It, it acts as a reward mechanism. And serotonin production is highly influenced by sugar. And as we all know, America is the land of sugar. So I think what is happening a lot of the time, we are making decisions based on feelings. So it doesn't take too much to disrupt our hormones or to just get a little out of balance or to trigger a fear response or to control us with addiction through serotonin production. And, you know, Marianne, all the gut health studies, they say the same thing. It's improper microbial gut balance affects decision making, your mood, your skin health, your energy levels, clear headedness and can create a tendency to overreact to stress and fear. And bad bacteria will cause you to feel unhealthy and can cause poor decision-making and altering your views of reality. Well, I appreciate you giving that to us in a nutshell, because I know this book covers so much. And one of the things I was very intrigued by is you draw this connection between food science, politics, and economics. How are these systems intertwined? Okay. So yes, these systems are are very large. And I'll try to hit on a few of the simpler points. Um, the first thing is subsidies. And these connect food policy, economics, and politics. For example, something I learned when I was researching this book, globally, the fossil fuels industry gets approximately $11 million in subsidies a minute, per minute. It's something about $6 trillion, uh, worldwide over the course of a year. So some of these chemicals that I talk about in the political gut are der derivatives of the fossil fuel industry. So that's one thing. Another thing is sugar. Again, <laughs> another good example, uh, sugar production accounts for approximately less than 2% of American crops by value um, in the United States. And it, it only has a few thousand employees, but yet the, the sugar companies account for approximately 30% of campaign contributions by crop producing companies. And sugar, of course, it gets billions of dollars in subsidies, and it's a very, uh, very micromanaged industry in the United States. It's a cash crop. Uh, something else we are hearing a lot about right now, inflation and cost of living. This economic stress has a direct effect on many people's lives. And people who are already feeling overworked and stressed, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that know exactly what I'm talking about. And I imagine these people don't get enough, a lot of time like for themselves. And so it turns out self-care is also really important for your well-being. So our capitalistic society is, is directly influencing people's behavior and well-being because everything is so expensive. And this relates to something important. There tends to be a need to help ourselves feel better about our lives and our personal situations when, when we're feeling stressed out and overworked and all that, right? So what do we do? Uh, many people turn to consumption and uh, many processed foods are engineered to keep you coming back for more. So they're, they're to keep you on that edge of wanting it again and again and again, it gives you that feeling. So, so our current political system or capitalist system, whatever you want to call it, in my opinion, it creates holes in our feelings and, and in our self. And the way that we can make ourselves feel better is with some instant gratification, uh, a sugar rush or an energy drink boost, some greasy fast food, salty chips, whatever it is for you that, that gets you to that point of feeling better about the whole in your life. And we've all been there and we are buying and consuming to lift our moods, to get more energy or to get that rush from the purchase. And this helps us to feel gratified or better about ourselves or better about our lives. And then the last 
couple points I want to make here is also, uh, you know, our, our brain via serotonin production in the gut has been hacked by corporations and, and politicians because they know how to pull your strings to create addiction and so much more. They know how to make you feel crappy. So you need something to feel happy. And I think the last thing here that's really important to mention um, before I finish this part is that uh, GMO crops, genetically modified crops, encourage the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides rather than discouraging it. And so a lot of those chemicals are products of the oil and gas industry. So once again, we move back into the, you know, the petroleum economy, which is, you know, America is the petroleum, the petrodollar. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Brett Casper in regards to his book, The Political Gut, Reset Your Reality, Quantum Nutrients, Two Brains, Upside Down Diets. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Are you an author, speaker, or expert who is looking for more publicity? Visit RadioGuestList.com and sign up for free interview requests from shows looking for guests. Radio Guest List is the number one free booking resource for radio, podcasts, and TV talk shows who are looking for experts like you right now. Visit RadioGuestList.com and sign up today to get the visibility you deserve. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special. When you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place, here is where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. It's one thing to become attached to your perfect home, but what do you do when that home becomes attached to you? A family in dire need of a fresh start, a mysterious house tied to the past. Buried deep within the foundation of the old Far Hill Manor lies a centuries-old secret. Dark forces or something stronger just waiting to be discovered. Caretaker, a supernatural thriller by breakout authors R.J. Halpert. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guest, Brett Casper, who's sharing with us his book, The Political Gut, Reset Your Reality, Quantum Nutrients, Two Brains, Upside Down Diets. I know your book integrates quantum mechanics with nutrition and politics. So how does this approach help in understanding the broader implications of food on society? My point of view is I'm trying to, what I try to do is I, I always try to take myself out of the situation and, and look at it as a whole and kind of like a pulled back view to kind of really see what's going on and have a broad view. And so looking at a society as a whole, I'm seeing it on an energetic level. And in the political gut, I talk a lot about this, about energy. And, and so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to recognize the full dimensionality of it. And, and this is where I think I really set myself apart with the political gut. Uh, the, the implications of physics are undeniable. They, they rule our existence. And um, there's a science communications officer at the U.S. Department of Energy who, who I like to quote. Um, her name is Ali Sundamir. 
And she says, your very important human body is really kind of, in a way, just a misleading collection of empty spaces on an empty planet in an empty universe. Yeah, it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a big sentence, right? It's really important to comprehend this completely. And, and I think it's really hard to grasp for most people. And it was hard for me too. It, it directly relates our existence to quantum mechanics. And so what's happening is that atoms are mostly empty space. What we have to recognize is that our bodies are made of atoms. And so atoms are only 0.0001% matter and 99.999% energy. In reality, <laughs> we are all energy. So all of us combine as an energetic whole, like uh, as a population. So what I'm seeing is when a majority of people are unhappy and negative and focusing on that negativity, each single person is redirecting their energy reserves towards negative outcomes as opposed to positive outcomes. And so to put it into perspective, when the energy is at a negative tipping point level, and I feel like in America, we're pretty close to this. There's, there's a lot going on in America right now. Th this sort of pushes the direction of the human experience. And it redefines the potential outcome of our existence. Our emotions control our energy and hormones control our emotions. And so if we're eating toxic foods and drinking toxic water and surrounded by toxic chemicals, then you know, how could we not become toxic people? To sum it up, on a quantum level, your decisions change the outcomes of your life and your life experiences. And, and we all know that negativity is just as contagious as positivity. It's, it's actually more contagious. And there's a scientific reason why, but I won't go into that now. And this is how I see how the food system and nutrition and these implications on society as a whole, how it's affecting society. What are some of the surprising or alarming findings that you uncovered? I, I know there's so many, but I'm, I'm sure there's probably <laughs> like one or two key ones that stick out that you'd like to share with us. There, there were a lot of things that I learned. And, and you know, again, that's the reason I'm, I'm writing this book. Um, there's a lot of information out there and it's hard to find or it's hidden on purpose or whatever it may be. It, 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 so I kind of just, I wanted to put it all together um, for people to learn because when I found out these things, I was really shocked. One thing that was really, really stood out to me was just how many chemicals are endocrine disruptors. I mean, it's, it's like all of them. There, there, there are all these chemicals in our food, in our water, in, in our clothes, in our furniture, our shampoo, that they're endocrine disruptors. And so that was a big one. Um, something else that was really, really, I couldn't believe was uh, how sewage is treated um, or not treated. Because in the U.S., the sewage system is open to all companies and slaughterhouses and manufacturing plants, they just, uh, many of them just dump their waste down the drain. And that's just because how the system works. So what happens is the EPA doesn't regulate uh, things like prescription drugs in the water or PFAS or many of the 90,000 chemical contaminants that get dumped into the sewage each year. The water filtration facilities are not equipped to filter out the water, the, the, the filter, of these, these chemicals and pharmaceuticals out of the water supply. And so what happens is they end up directly in your tap water oceans and on farmlands. And they end up on farmlands because uh, what happens with about 50% of sewage waste is it's processed into biosolids. And then they use the biosolids as fertilizer. So then they put the biosolids back onto the crops. And then these crops contaminate the watershed and the animals. And so this cycle of contamination is, is really impossible to eliminate without stringent sewage and waste filtration standards. But I think that was, those were like the main big ones for me. I know there's so much in your book and I was so grateful <laughs> because it is such a great resource. And, you know, we do hear a little bit about like food science over here and what's going on with the supply chain, but to have it all together in one resource, I mean, how great is that? And that's one of the things I really appreciate about the political gut. I felt it was very, very insightful. What do you want our readers and listeners to take away from your book? I should say we really, really need to understand our, our food system. I, I, what I want people to take away is, is you know, that one, I, I really want to share this knowledge with them. Like, I want you to, to buy the political gut and read it 
knowledge is power and, and informed eaters, people who know about their food are more likely to make better, more health conscious, more health conscious food choices, which is going to lead to a healthier, happier quality of life for those people. And then this overall can have a broad reaching, long lasting effect on society. As I mentioned earlier about how, you know, energy is pushes society in different directions. Um, so if more people are healthy and happy, uh, they are less sick and less negative and less afraid. And then, uh, so more positivity is going to steer society in a, you know, more positive direction. I, I can't say it enough. Like the, the information in here is really important that, that people who eat food understand, you know, it's an essential resource for the 21st century. And I honestly think the facts I lay out on this book should be taught in schools because our food and our food system controls who we are as people. And, and, and that's just the way it is. You know, we are what we eat. So Brett, where can our listeners connect with you and be part of your community and learn more about your work? BrettCasper.com. And that's B-R-E-T-T-C-A-S-P-E-R uh, as my personal website. Um, the political gut.com also is um, the book website. Um, the book is available on Amazon. You can find it on Amazon, The Political Gut. Just type it in the search bar and books. Also, we have Instagram uh, and Facebook. Both of those are Pure Luck Official, which is my, my brand that I founded. Well, Brent, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you, Marianne. I'm so grateful for you to have found me here and helped me talk about the book. And I'm just super grateful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Brett. It's been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your book, The Political Gut. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.